Good evening and welcome to tonight. It will be a half stone, half hour, and I'm Hammy, and this is Falkroft Cast. Hope you're well and good. We are going to be just ladder and learning. It's ladder Wednesday. It's towards the end of a season again, which means that we're just going to be kicking back, relaxing, in preparation for what will probably be a push to the finish. We're going to see if we can legend, legend in this coming December. So Whatever. that is going to be us. Um, in the meantime, we're just going to tweak some decks, sort of get a sass of the current meta, and then give up a hardcore week and see if in a, a solid week or so, and of course the higher we get towards the end of this season, uh, the more stars we will get that carry into the next season. So, we're going to tweet out on some things, we're going to get cracking, going to get to streaming, and then we would like you for this half hour to be nominating the decks, asking questions, we'll examine not only what we're playing and enjoying, but also what is kicking around elsewhere on the ladder. And I've been enjoying some druid recently. We've had some fun druids in arenas and similar things. So let's kick off with some druid on the ladder. And of course, um, people have said before on YouTube, my goodness, why are you not showing? Why are you not showing your uh, your rank? Well, there you go, rank 16 at this point in time. Um, let us jump in and kick off with some druid and then any other decks you fancy. You fancy? Good evening, Thrush. How are you doing? It's good to see you. Um, I have a confession. I have a confession to those of you folk who were tuned in last night. Um, 7 3. It went 7 3. Um, I've got a screenshot and everything. Our arena druid from last night's arena Tuesday went 7 3, and I, I know I said I was going to um, play it with you guys. I, I just couldn't resist the temptation earlier, and I got stuck in. We, we lost a couple uh, through really bad draw, but some really nice pressure decks. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm going to be wild growthing into drakes. I'm going to trade all that back in. We're playing a version, we're playing 5 Ats Druid off of the World Championships. I'll see if I can drag that up to have a look at. But yeah, we've been enjoying Druid, had a really nice um, Druid Arena deck that we were just discussing. And where is it gone? Where is it gone? The Hearthstone Half Hour view. I wish to sort by date. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a rogue I see. I see Thaddeus. I see Deck Minus Sonaris. That probably sounds like the Druid one. There you go. This is the deck that we are playing. The deck that we are playing Minus Sonaris plus Kel'Thuzad. <laughs> I, I, I've yet to see Kel'Thuzad cause wrecking in this deck, but uh, we're hoping that it's going to be working. That deck's going on the fridge. I like your style. So corning into a shade is nice. So I'm going to tap on the table for the time being. No real point in me corning into a wild growth. I get three mana next turn nonetheless with the coin. So, we don't know what kind of warrior... Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. How's it going? Um, turn two, well, we can just straight up growth, or we can drop into a shade. One shade into two shades next turn. I'm going to go for that. Uh, the growth gives us the ramp, because we could swipe and then spectral a turn earlier. It could be the stronger play. Uh, All of Draenor, of course, if you see this uh, um, card back of our opponent here. That's the... I think the digital collectors or similar. Okay, armor and up, and we're going to be stacking up 3 3 with an Ancient of Law. Um, now I can Wrath, I can just uh, I could ramp and then get down a Spectral next turn. I think I'm going to do that because two shades, I'm vulnerable to some Warrior control. But if he's not played anything so far, he's either really struggling or it's going to be a bit of a control play. So, two options do I shade and start getting real nasty real early? Um, or do I Wild Growth and then drop the Spectral? Let's try the two shade opening. Um, and. I can trash his armor off next turn. We can swipe to control. We've got a, a wrath, and we can then drop a shape shift potential number three. All of this armoring up. Um, Okay, okay. So we are nicely charged up to next Ramus is down. We've got the Innovate, which means we can actually jump straight into an Ancient of Law if we want to. Um, there's nothing for me to Wrath. I don't really need to swipe. Um, let's see what my opponent's cooking. I'm going to keep tapping away. And remember, of course, we don't really need to leave these in stealth until he does something to control them. So I'm going to throw, throw out one of them and start keeping that armor down. And let's see if he suddenly starts using control. We could be grabbing whirlwinds, we could be grabbing executes, all kinds of things. Coming out of the stealth this is the challenge. Um, I'm not sure Warrior has anything that can remove those. Just thrash in. He has one damage CC, doesn't he? Um, with stealth... Yes. Oh, this is interesting. Now, where is where is the challenge going? Is he going? Is he playing some kind of warrior giant? 
realize this is where you feel uncomfortable. You're like, what's the trap? What's the problem? What's going to happen? Um, I don't really need the druid at this point, so he might do some kind of insane total control. Now, the, the question is, do I... Uh, and brawl, yes. That's a very good shout by, uh, by Lud. A brawl could mess us up real quick. I don't need to innovate. I can start hitting him for nine, and these are going to get charged up. So I'm going to unstealth these and see when the inevitable control comes in. Maybe as a whirlwind and no execute. I'm just really not sure what this deck is playing. We will find out. Ooh, okay. And that in that comes, I fully expect a big game hunter. Then comes a second control, and we see the controls coming out. Okay, so Druid of the Claw will certainly give us options. I can swipe to nuke some of that away. A swipe and a wrath will certainly keep the table clear. I don't need to go into those if I don't want. Um, I could tank away some of that damage. I think we may as well just go for some uh, aggro. So if I swipe away... Hmm... I'll do that. And then I can rough for one under a card. I could have removed both. Could innovate actually. Oh, and there's Cairn. What a lovely, nasty play. I could have potentially drop all sorts of nastiness. So is it worth dropping innovate? I've hung on to this innovate for so long now. I could just go for the hard control. Perhaps a, a slight waste of an innovate there. But I'm just going to get some rocking power on. He's already down to 11. He's waiting for Rag. Could be. So with the Druid of the Claw, we have 13 damage, and I have lethal even with our armor up, unless there's a shield block going down, which there is. So there we go. He's in there for another turn at least. Another minion down or similar. Can armor up again up to 17. Sucking up all the damage. And this is where, if I had Sonaris, I could accelerate into the end game. There goes a death spike. Death rattle of one to wall. Hopefully we finish before nine, says Thrashy probably has Alex if he is control. It's a very fair point. And in comes a control swing. He's gonna take that and hang on a second. Do I have the lethals? I believe I do. Let me just check my maths is good. It is! Yay! <laughs> so there we go. So there you go. I mean, I, I like that Firebat Druid. I mean, very much we've, we've tried to cover it on a previous New Player Monday. You can go and check on youtube.com forward slash fellcraftcasts. Um, hopefully you guys can see the decks coming up. We have... Uh, next Control Warrior... Fly that ha ha rogue. Try to do better with that than this Monday gone, which was terrible by me. Uh, Fly that hunter. We can go for some aggro mage, some death rattle secret, crusher paladin, which I find a lot of fun personally. I'm going to go for some next warrior. Okay, let's grab a next warrior and see what that looks like. Okay, we'll do a next warrior and we'll do a hunter. Why not? Let's mix it up. Let me see if I can dig out the next warrior list. I've got one called Chicken Power. I'm guessing it's not that. Super chamois with Illidan flavour. Um, Kalinto and anti, no, anti metal warrior. Blimey, that was a long time ago. Okay. Uh, Control Warrior September. I reckon. Oh, next warrior. I reckon it is probably going to be next warrior. I reckon it's going to be this one. Let's check it out. So this drops in. If it's got two engines, which it does, oh, I love this deck. So, so solid. So solid crew. Um, I want a mulligan for early trades against a rogue. Maybe it's a fireback rogue, but I'm quite happy to keep an early armor smith. So, into turn one, we've got a death spite, which was similar to what we, we didn't really see much from our opponent the other day as well. So, let's see. Um, if the opponent last game, we saw him drop a Death Spite, we saw a Taskmaster, Yizira. I'm not going to be Taskmaster or anything, I'm going to throw that down. It is a target for aggressive control, but a Rogue is not going to be doing anything too nasty to that. If he damages it multiple times, then he is going to be armoring me up some. As long as I get a bit of armor out of that, I'm getting some, getting the value that it was designed for. 
Okay, in comes the weapon. You probably just swing to the face, I would imagine, rather than uh, going all up. Hey, evening, Obring. Great to see ya. Been a while. Been a while. One day I'll be able to afford this deck. I, uh, yeah, it took it took a little while to afford. I'm not gonna lie. Um, cool Taskmaster down. This is, I might say, ridiculous. A little bit silly. I like having armor. I like being able to tap away at a rogue. If he's miracling or something, the more damage I get on him, the less chance he can swing with his weapon. Um, this is Taskmastering into a an armorsmith. Hyper aggressive. Plenty of reasons just for armoring up and tapping away there and waiting. Here comes a coin for a turn 4 mana play. What could this be? SI7, yep. Two mana combo, removes a minion off the table. Very nice. It does give me a little bit more armor. I can swing into a death spite on turn 4. Ooh, and a stealth. Interesting that he stealths now, because I th generally if he's playing a Miracle Rogue, you would have thought that he'd save the stealth, actually, for his um, Gadgets and Auctioneer. Now, Whirlwind and Execute will do nothing. I can armor up, of course. I think it's pretty sensible to drop a Death Spite, tap for three to the face. Um, I can swing to this and remove it. I'm saving the durability on this. I could hit him in the face, but I'd rather use the durability with my Warrior's Health and Armor as a tool to try and control the minions on the board. Um, if he is... Miracle Roguing, then we know what he's going to be throwing down. He's going to be throwing down, trying to control me, throw down his Gadgets and Auctioneer. I want to be able to take that Gadgets and Auctioneer out. Shiving into drawing a card. Curiouser and curiouser. It obviously needs the card draw. Shadow Step, okay. Two less, meaning he can then play that again to remove this. So really, this is playing the Shadow Step this early in the game. Um, if he's a Miracle Rogue, he's, he's in trouble. He's either in trouble or perhaps slightly misplaying. So, whirlwind and execute, just not really too necessary. A belcher can go down from me. I'm just going to swing with my weapon. I can play another belcher next turn. And then Miracle Rogue is really going to have to find ways to punch through those. He does have them. He's got saps. He's got eviscerates and similar. There's plenty of things he can use to sort of start trying to punch, punch holes through that deck. Um, but at this point in time, we've got a reasonable amount on the table. And the very fact that our rogue has played absolutely nothing, pardon me, uh, sorry, oh, the nose blowing sound. <laughs> I forgot to uh, mute my microphone. It's the man flu, the man flu. Now I'm going to keep the weapon durability as well. I could go sort of hyper aggressive, but again, keeping that weapon durability because I would quite like to be able to, as soon as that gadget's an auctioneer or anything hits the table, I'm just saving that as your Drake. A nice bridging card, as we've discussed before. Drawing the card, Sinister Strike does that. Interesting for the Sinister Strike. Could be a Firebat Rogue, the, the ha ha ish Rogue variant. Um, I don't have enough armor to be able to be removing that. Um, I think it's fairly reasonable, fairly reasonable, to be armoring up. A oh, well and an Execute is a lot for this, so I'm going to use my weapon to remove this. Now he's keeping his weapon notice, he's not swinging away A because it's not really going to be doing too much to my minions and B because he's wanting to use a deadly poison uh, perhaps something to, you know, deadly poison to get that plus two, plus blade flurry some kind of combo there, or a new weapon and a blade flurry potentially. As expected, Gadgets and Auctioneer, does he have loads of free cards? Shiv, one damage and draw if he's got loads of zero mana cards, this is where his draw engine gets going I can remove this next turn Oh, now that's unfortunate. Um, because I can shield block into a shield slam. Removal, lovely. Um, and then that aside, I think really all I can do is armor, axe, and with these, swing in. Now, I could pull him to within lethal range. That's the only reason that I'm doing the additional three with the axe. Um, Obring, Obring shouted earlier and said, how does this deck work, I believe? Um, let, allow me to cough off microphone. Pardon me. Um, I know roughly, hope, hopefully you've seen from a few turns, but we keep the op opponent's minions under control, the board under control in the early game, and then we get stuck in and start trashing them mid to late game with all our big nasty minions. And spells. Here we go, the, the miracle combo is firing off. He needs to be able to remove this off the table to get away from Leaf he doesn't know if I have a charge. I do have a Belcher. 
Due to the sap. That comes the three. Shadow step. Uh, returning this to hand. Interesting. Now, is he going to attack and remove my minion? Very bold if he does. Um, okay, that's game. Because uh, we have lethal. Lovely stuff. So, a bit of control warrior there. So consistent control warrior. Um, of course, as you can see by the amount of stars, you don't have to play so legend heavy. But the control warrior does revolve around throwing a lot of late game chunky chunky minions down. And a lot of those tend to be legendary. So you guys wanted hunter. Let's go for some five at hunter now as well. And remember, of course, that although, you know, you're probably going to want to be getting stuck into... Um, one, maybe two deck types that you're really familiar with when you're laddering up. A lot of people use two or three. That does not mean that you need two or three. But sometimes you may want just maybe a second deck option. Okay, so let me try and remember this deck. Right, This is the nice vibe out Hunter with some very subtle differentiations. It's got the secret elements in. I'm going to keep Mad Scientist and Animal Companion. Throw away the Snake Trap because I want Snake Trap with um, the... Uh, the knife jugglers, I do believe. This is a, a weird, um, not weird, I would say, but a, a, a slightly unusual. It's like the aggro hunter with early game charging options of old with some secrets in, and then um, also with a hint of death rattle as well. So it combines a bunch of mechanics to very evil effect. Mages do have secrets. I will keep flare for that reason, because I would quite like to flare through any secrets that the mage may drop. And because lots of people enjoy a good secrets deck nowadays, um, there's many reasons to have. Um, a flare as a hunter. <coughs> Pardon me. So a fire blast ping comes in, we can draw lots of secrets out. Um, an animal companion could really accelerate me forward in the process. So I'm going to throw down an animal rather than a scientist. Oh, a huffer for charge. That lets me start charging, getting damage on the mage nice and early on. Mad scientist again, equally good player. Could be tip tapping away, forcing him to deal with that for a first spell, and there's nothing else he could do this turn. Um, interesting. Coins actually even to remove that, but I get a secret on the table. So for me, spending spells, spending damage. Um, that will whip out my snake trap. Now snake trap, oh so good if I can get down. Um, <laughs> uh, the ideal thing I'd have down with that, of course, is the knife juggler. So this deck, having a knife juggler, you can see snake trap will do three chip damage. If it triggers the haunted creeper when it dies or summon two spiders, and that will also summons trigger the knife juggling as well. He's just gone straight for a big yeti. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, another snake trap as well. If only I had knife jugglers for that early game pressure. I've not been able to do the Undertaker death rattle buffing in the early game so far, but as we come into turn five, I'd say I'm ahead. Do I have a beast on the table? Yes. Kill command in this case I'm going to use for table control. Um, could have low tabbed, but in this case, quite happy to just keep chipping away. The mage um, in before flame strike. We would imagine that if the mage has got back in a usual typish mage, we've seen sort of I don't know fairly. Okay, possibly a secrets mage. Interesting. Oh, a sorcerer's apprentice as well. One mana spell. I can destroy both of those. The Eagle Humbo, very nice here, of course. Low tab will slow down and frustrate our mage no end. Um, but the other option is going for an Eagle Horn, um, which then lets me strip the table of various things. I think, in terms of control, I'm going to go for an Eagle Horn uh, because that will let me remove uh, not only this. But I can then remove that, and then if I want to, I can just, um, well, that will get a freezing trap up as well. Um, I'm going to, do I want to flare at this point, or do I wait for him to play more secrets? I'm going to remove it. Oh, it's a counter spell, one that would not work against, but at least that's uh, had the effect of removing it anyway. So let's charge on in. 16, 16, 16 health. Okay, so we're ahead, but we're not done. Snake Trap, if we got a Knife Juggler, that could perhaps cement the game for us. Oh, Lothab would have really slowed down this. Maybe Flaring Let's go double secret. Ugh, nasty, nasty. Okay, so first thing to do, I think, is... Let's see if we can trigger something by attacking. Uh, this could be a Duplicate or a similar Mirror Image. Similar copy. Yep. 
he sees me, but that's not going to have the battle cry effect. So, with all of that taken into account, not ideal, but remember I've got a freezing trap, um, it will return to hand and cost two more. Snake trap, it will uh, summon the snakes also, so I'm in a nice strong position. So I can just ping him for another two and charge on in. Hey, Defnarsh! Welcome, Defnarsh. Um, is Token Druid with Chows viable in this meta? Um, have you got a deck list? Tell you what, Death Nodge, why don't we why don't we try it out and have a look? Let's try it next and do a little run through for you. Um, gut feeling. Remember that at the moment this is quite a low a low to mid sort of ladder place we're in at the moment, so um, there'll be a big difference, of course, uh, Death Nodge between uh, here. And the the legends and the the rank five three from rank one, but we can certainly have a little look and have a feel around, and uh, if we uh, grab a list and see how it rolls. Okay, well here I'm quite happy to be mm, 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 freezing traps checked in there. Let's get rid of this tank. Let's get that out of the way. Two attack, one health. I'm actually quite happy to be throwing down a die wolf in this situation. Let's me pop that. Okay, I'm gonna keep the pressure on because the more we chip away the health of this mage unless that's an ice block the more close we're getting to victory we've got lethal by quite some distance an ice block will save him another turn okay nicely done table clear but a fire blast for one I still get my three one one snakes as well of course snakes on a plane so I think it's pretty fair to throw all of this down Bing, about a boom, and we'll throw down another whip. Now we are of course vulnerable, if a major was packing removal we'd be vulnerable to it. Um, so, unless our mage hath tanks or ice block, and it's kind of 50-50 with these mage secret decks, some of them don't bother packing ice blocks nowadays. A 3 damage to a character and freeze, sensible, oh, goes for a well played. Fire blast. So by the, the well played, Okay, well played. Lovely. Let's have a look at Token. Token Druid. My Druid. Lovely stuff. Ooh, oh, he's giving me a German one. Okay, we can work it out. Thank you very much. Let's let's work it out. Okay, so we're going to build for the final part of this episode. Defnage. Defnage has joined us. As you can see, Defnage, we're bumming around, Frank sort of a. Uh, Bumbling and, and uh, chilling out around rank 15, so not massively high, but we can certainly try it next. Um, so what's what's in this meta? You see a lot of secrecy stuff. Druid, ramp druid is something that you need to take into consideration. What are we going to drop? Mm, aggro mage. Let's drop the aggro mage. Let's call this a druid, and let's have a look at the question of death knowledge. It says token druid with chow. Token chow. Like a zombie chow. Okay, um, I'm quickly going to work this out in terms of. Um, beg pardon. The German. It's a German list, but I'm guessing that Anna Regan is innovates. Uh, zombie frass. Zombie chow. Looks like two chows. Mark the Vudnis, Mark the Wild. You see, not only are we. Um, oh no, it's not Mark of the Wild, is it Power of the Wild? Yeah, it is Power of the Wild. So, Mark to the Vildness is not Mark of the Wild, it's Power of the Wild. There you go. A Zorn. That sounds like Wrath to me. Is that, uh, or is it Wild Growth? Hmm. I'm trying to do this by the card art as well as anything else. Uh, I think that's Wrath. Yeah, that's a wrath, isn't it? Echo Schlamen. So that's going to be Schlamen, is it? Echo Schlam, Schlammer? Sh Echo Schlam. Maybe Schlam is ooze. The resolution of the screenshot is a little bit low, but it doesn't really matter. Echo ooze. That is, because I can tell with the art. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. We're just going for some. Uh, Gestabelta Krabla, I think that's the older, uh, the tokens. So token druid, token decks, generally you get lots of little minions out and the tokens either trigger effects or you buff them up uh, to be really 
uh, value quote unquote. You can trade bigger cards for your smaller cards if your smaller cards get buffed, your tokens, as it were. Um, or you swarm with tokens is another option. Right. Wilter Bruten. Wilter Bruten. What is Wilter Bruten? I think that's Savage Raw. Yep. Um, and of course, Savage Raw in this tokenish deck. Um, if you've got lots of little minions on and you do like a Savage Raw, then you're buffing them up as well for a big finish. So, lots of options, ways you can buff your little um, minions, your tokens, to become nasty and horrible. Prank. Prankenheiths. That looks like a swipe to me. Potentially, is that a. Frankenheist, that looks like, yeah, that's a swipe, of course it is. Hooter de Hintz, Keeper of the Grove, that is the thing. Verdinger von Argus, Verdinger. Was it that Verteidiger? Verteidiger. That sounds like a defender to me. A Violet was brilliant, and of course, it, the Violet um, will quickly run through. Now, I've played tokens before, but you're going to have to forgive me, it's been a while ago, so I'm going to remind myself a bit of it. We can all learn it and take a look at it together as we go. Lotherb. I like the Violet Teacher. We'll come on to that. You see that in Mages and Simmer as well. Uh, Schlickspucker. Oh, yes, that is the... I've just totally forgotten his name. What's his name? <laughs> his name is... His name is Fat Naxxramas Card. <laughs> I do apologise. My brain is a little bit mushy. Sludge Belcher, yeah, 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 that's who I'm talking about. I had two of him on my last deck and I can't even remember his name. Poor guy. Uh, natural, uh, is that a Starfire? Um, or was it a Force of Nature? That's a Force of Nature. And then Untrum de Lern, the Ancient of Law. There we go. Now what have I missed? I've got Two innovates, two chows, two powers of wars, two wraths, echoing use. What we have missed is, I believe, a couple of them. Spider. Spider, spider. Next spider. Haunted creepers times two. I've also missed another one of something. I've got an Argus, got a Defender of the Wild. Hell Enderbear. What's a Hell Enderbear? Let's try and work that out. Linda Barrel. It's a three mana druid card, I reckon. Do you reckon that's a healing touch? That looks like a healing touch. Nice. Okay, very well. We have a token. Whew. Right, so I'm gonna just gonna throw this up on the screen. Token Druid. Will Token Druid work in this meta? I reckon. Yeah. So let's do a mini new player Monday. Let's do a quick run through the deck. Let's throw it in, give it a quick trial or two, and see how side. So. A token druid with Chow. Why is Chow awesome? Well, Chow, if you get it in the early game, will let you trade, 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 really lock down your opponent as well as with some of the so token chow. Let's save that up and I just want to get this in the, the left column of our of our screen and overlay so we can have a look at it and analyze it as we play. I'm gonna get games going to start with. How does this work? Well if we look at the mana curve you know a bit of early game control so much mid game and a bit in the late game but really we want to have won it by the late game if at all possible and your violet teacher whenever you cast a spell summoning a 1-1 one -one apprentice that is to give you lots of tokens in the late game to sort of buff up with a savage roar and finish the game off let's get into some ladder matches and while we play we can uh, analyze as we go along token trail so in the early game, what are we doing with some token challenge? Well, we can innovate, we can ramp in uh, if we want to to some of our mid-game threats. If we really need, we can get teachers out nice and early on. That would be a great ramping choice. Belches as well if we really need to defend. But getting out Chow in the early game is good because it means we can trade away our opponent's minions rather than attack them to the face. Chow is keeping the table under control. We can buff the Chow if we need. Power of the Wild gives us... Um, general overall buff to all of our minions on the table. We can start teaming that up as well. Of course you can summon 3-2 Panther. Wrath table under control. Ooze, we can buff up oozes as well and clone them. Creepers give us multiple small minions. Um, Savage Raw, two of those. 
I'm going to keep the Innovate. So I think I'm going to keep the Ooze in next. I'm going to trade out the Savage Roar because I don't want that too early. So how can we finish with this deck? Well, we want lots of little minions on the table. We buff them up with a Savage Roar. Ideally, there's no tanks in our way. And we charge to the face for the kill. By the mid to mid late game, we should have enough down. So this token has got a number of ways of doing damage. We can summon more tokens by playing spells off to the Violet Teacher. Lurth that slows our opponent down. Belcher solidifies the mid-table, mid-game for us. Force of Nature gives us those three 2-2 two, two charging treants to accompany any of our other cards. And two laws will heal us up or draw cards as we see fit. But we're going to take some damage in the early game. So do I want to ramp into a shade? It's certainly an aggressive start. Um, I don't mind it too much. I'm going to go for it on this occasion to give him something to think about early doors. And also the other thing as well with this deck is that at this point in time, do I want to wrath and remove that um, a bit aggressive? Two echoing users would certainly give me some uh, tokens to start tipping that away with, so I'll quite happily go into that. We'll leave this on the table as well. There's not much bar of flare that can remove that. Um, how can this work? Well, this this um this deck is nice. Um, you need to make sure you get the table under control. Ah, and Moldy. Hey, Moldy. And hey, Legion. Time they see. Hey, you guys doing one, maybe two games. And then we'll follow this Eve. I'm well, I'm a little bit ill. A little bit on the ill side, I do apologise. Right, back to this game. We are answering the question, having a look at Devnodge, who is saying, is this token druid deck going to be good in the current meta? Um, Corner, so can we trade away? Hmm. Well, Roth, I'm quite happy to remove something with. It gives me the card draw. I'm going to be taking damage. So, do I want him to draw a card or take the damage? I will let him draw a card. Now, options it might have been tempting actually to corner into that teacher, but I can play some spells after. So, are we going to start getting the tokens off the table? This isn't a threat until. I actually allow it to be. So if I leave that, that's going to get so nasty. Thresh says the trial seems a bit unnecessary for Druid since he has a lot of cards like Wild Growth and Innovate, allowing him to play bigger minions earlier. I'd switch the Chow for something like Mark of the Wild to use on the users. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you can already see that I've not got these Chow out, and it's not drastically. If I'd got them, my start would have been loads better. Uh, would have been certainly stronger, but it's not badly affected me. If that makes sense. Um, the hunter. Now, do I remove one of these minions and give him another secret, um, or do I silence it and prevent the secret triggering, or do I get the teacher down and start just swarming with tokens? Well, if this is an explosive trap, all the tokens, all the all the tokens in the world aren't going to help me. I think I'm going to go for the silence on that, um, and then let's have a look and see if this is a uh, explosive. Okay, it is. Well, that removes, but. This isn't going to be popping just yet. I'm keeping that for a nasty threatening finish. Good evening, Zano. Okay, so we now have a bear out, an OMG bear too. We have more silencing options, more removal options as well. This can help us trash some stuff off the table. Um, if I throw down a Violet Teacher, I don't have loads of spells to start summoning things afterwards. Um, I can certainly do a little bit of an armor up. I could just remove this out of the way. Savage will get some removal going. I'm going to, um, I'm going to drop a Moonfire on this. And basically say, look, if you don't decide to trade next turn, I'm going to remove your tank.
Okie dokie, so some trading hath happened, the creeper hath charged, we have been steady shotted, and more mad scientists have been coming in, but the flare was the thing that made the difference. The names start trading up and causing nasty problems. The nasty of the problems. Right, well, dropping this down, I'm going to trade this to start. Freezing trap. Okay, I don't actually mind throwing that down again because the science will be kind of handy. Sure, charmer up. Tap for some damage. Does he want to draw this off? Our hunter is running out of some draw power. I'm assuming that you can just switch as between UK and US. Oh, another two secrets. This hunter is really going for it. Now, if I was flaring, that would be excellent. Um, I need to pop other stuff off. If I pop off this final one, well, I need to start getting some tokens on the table. Um, let's throw this down. Let's do a three and see if he's got any more secrets in the deck. What else could he have? Another secret? Oh, triple secret. This is exciting. I'm going to have to see how much stuff I can trigger. Um, well, one of them's got to be an explosive. <laughs> Let's uh, get rid of the pain when we can. Let's get rid of the explosive. There we go. Number one. So it could be a freezing. Oh, and a misdirect as well. Oh, that's painful. <laughs> there we go. Are we going to be lunchtime Hearthstone? We certainly are from next week. Down goes a zombie chow. Okay, so I want to be silencing, removing, getting some of this off the deck. Force of nature, the charging triumphs of pain. Force of nature, savage rule would give us a, a mighty powerful bit of comboing. Um, for this reason, this reason, duh. I'm going to drop a little silence. Um, chow, I actually don't mind dropping Chow at this point because it will let us restore Freezing Trap. Knew it was going to happen. Chow will let me pick these off the table a bit and his health is still not too high, but I just need to make sure I don't get charged down. Is it going to be too little too late? It will be. This is where the um, Ancient of Laws would be very nice. And with the Savannah Highman, I think sadly this is a, a GG's. He's done nice. So can we remove things? Force of Nature and Savage Roar. That will let us pick off a whole bunch. But it's not going to let us get everything off the table. Let's experiment. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 22. You see if I'd... Um, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 22. You see if I'd had... Uh, managed to get him down just another 6 health. That would have been game. As it was, this is probably Luth. But let's see if... Well, I don't need to get rid of that. I kind of need to get rid of this. Um, let's get rid of these first. Let's get rid of these first. Bosh. zonk -a donk uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we're kind of hanging on in. Hanging on in. Great to see Legion, great to see Moldy as well, been a while. Glad to see people are getting to heroes. Oh, and nice. So down comes this. We can restore five health. We're not out of it yet. We're hanging on in for dear, dear, dear life. Um, now at this stage, do I want to be tipping away things? I don't want him to draw cards. I'm not too fussed about giving him the heal at this point. What I would like to do is just keep him under some semblance of control.
Oh, playing Warlords with me in the background. Well, that's very kind of you. Okay, well, I've only got one health left, so there is no way of me winning this game. Um, you can see that if I'd just done another six damage, we would have had. We would have managed to uh, to grab this guy. Um, so, the Belcher does no good. The heals were not quite enough. You could have seen that oh, this Token Druid had the win, but I needed to do more damage in the early game, so that's a learning. In fact, let's just get, grab one more. One more to finish off. Let's try this token druid one more time. We have seen some uh, good stuff. We have enjoyed. Um, oops. Oh, okay, Paladin. So one of my concerns of this deck was how it would fare against aggro. So if this is an aggro aggressive early game Paladin, it'll be a really nice test. Okay, so let's this time try ramping into the Violet Teacher. I didn't get that out early enough in the game last time. Perhaps that would have helped more. More damage in the early game will help us more, I think. That's what we lacked last time, so let's try learning from our mistake and see if it benefits us on this occasion. Oh, we have a Chow. So that Chow will trade against our Violet Teacher till the cows come home. Now I can Roth that off the table, or I can Innovate into the Teacher. I'm going to Innovate into the Teacher, let's give that player a go, see how it comes. Okay. Right, well I can tap that off the table for no huge benefit to him. Um, I'm going to get at least one spell out of it, but it's not best. The, the, the very chunky oh, Paladin Secret goes down. That could be the, the Noble Sacrifice. A lot of people like Noble Sacrifice for defending their minions on the deck. Down comes the Mad Scientist. We've got a Secrets Paladin. Okay, Savage Raw ain't going to be doing loads for us. Uh, a Wrath. Let's remove, I think, I'm not too, let's get the secrets over and done with. Right, let's do this first. Okay, well we know what it's not. Oh, actually, I don't mind that too much, because <laughs> if I'd taken damage, that would have um, healed us twice. Ooh, you don't really want that with Chow. That would have been a 10 health heal for me. Uh, an interesting combo. Of course if you were sort of doing damage instead instead of the heal, but you know obviously at, at this point in the early game of course it didn't cause me too much trouble. Or did him too much trouble. Um, because my health is high. The chow is not really healing me for anything, but it's the, the theory I guess. That would have been a ten health heal. And now come the Undertakers, it's an Undertaker Paladin. Nurse Sacrificing because he wants a secret. And we can expect that to be a new wall sacrifice or something similar. Okay, spell wise, savage raw, I think that can just swipe. Ooh, gangster tripping. Okay, I just dislike that. There we go. Oh, go a random friendly minion 3 2. Alright, there we go. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just trade that off the deck before it becomes more of a problem. <coughs> okay, so, we're sort of trading blow for blow. I've got Force of Nature Raw. We've yet to get loads of tokens down, but echo, two echoing users next turn are actually going to get us into a really nasty position for tokening in the late game. I think we can two echoing use. I think that'll be pretty fun and enjoyable. No way of me buffing them, of course. But let's not forget Savage Raw. If we fill the table with tokens, then we're going to be causing some devastation later on.
Okay, oh, he's taken my echoing ooze and he's answered me with an echoing ooze. We are oozing it up. Right, well, zombie chow actually don't mind too much at this point because it'll help me control tabla. Um, do I want to silence that and prevent it from popping something else? Or do I just want to go ahead and start removing oozes? Let's go ahead and start removing some oozes. Um, was tempted to drop a chow. Uh, trading three uses, all my uses for that I'm not going to do. So I just want to get to a position where I can force of nature and savage raw, um, because that will give me some damage. Three, six, nine, twelve, eighteen. Let's say twenty. But I need to get him 20 or below, remember? This was our challenge last time. Thanksgiving theme deck. <laughs> Chickens. I guess the angry chicken is the nearest thing to a turkey. Alrighty, Hammer of Wrath. Oh. Okay. Uh, Argus will cause some awkwardness. I, I need to just try and trigger this. Okay, there's nothing triggerable. Uh, and Argus isn't too bad here, really. Um, I'm going to quite happily lob that down. Let us. That will let me remove this. Redemption. Oh, now that's quite a nasty. That's that's nasty because you can start doing more things with that. But uh, we can just about soak all of this up. Just. Oh, using Chow as a finisher. Now that'd be enjoyable. Let's give that a go. I'm going to risk dropping Chow. Now, what do we have? If I force of nature into a raw... Oh, Consecrate. A token deck's worst enemy. And if he starts throwing down a Tyrion and things... Um, okay, so... Well, we're going to take some heals. We've got some... Uh, Force of nature. I can't savage rule. The violet teacher will let me start trading. I think we just continue tipping away until I'm in a nice filled position. Now I can force of nature and raw next turn. What is that going to give me? That is going to give me mm, six damage, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, um, and then six times two is twelve. It's Twenty-five. Is that right? No, Tyrion. <laughs> mm, uh, uh, uh. Right, I don't know whether this is the right play or not, but because it's our last game, let's just do it anyway and see what happens. Yeah. Okay, what does this do? Can I take this out? <laughs> um, I don't want the Chow dying, of course. Um... These will die at the end of the go anyway, because they're triants, so I may as well sacrifice these. I can drop one of those, and I can then afford to take that damage to the face, I think. He does get an Ashbringer though, which isn't fabulous, he will go for this immediately. Um, 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 um. Now, the question is, can he wreck all of those? He'll heal up some, he'll kill that off, and he'll get 9 mana. Are we going to be able to win? going on here, all sorts of nasty, just hitting the table but he has to wreck this to get the health heal I very much see that being part of our future well ah, that's a well played well 
going to see you guys back and then uh, great so thank you so much for tuning in um, we're going to wrap it up there it's been a, a lot more than half hour than planned um, and needed to try and keep myself in some kind of being alive so thanks very much for tuning in if you've watched on Twitch for the first time come check out youtube.com for slash Farcraftcast loads of Hearthstone half hour there Heroes of the Storm other Blizzard games and other things um, if you're on YouTube come check out twitch.tv for slash Farcraftcast we go live five nights a week and tweet on that Farcraftcast uh, just like the YouTube uh, end of it there over on the left at Farcraftcast and we're going to go live website Farcraft.org check out some stuff there too hopefully see you soon and Thank you for tuning in. Hope you had some fun lettering and learning. Four different decks we tried there. And we'll make success.